Hi, my name is Jared, and this is Horror Obsession. Well, Netflix has made a Resident Evil show. Which is to say, they have taken the name Resident Evil and placed it on a new show they created, along with some familiar names from the franchise, such as Wesker, and Umbrella, and Raccoon City. I only watched one episode, but wanted to review it, because so far I am extremely underwhelmed. The show is closer to a CW teen drama than a Resident Evil game, or even movie. The acting isn't great, but the leads don't have much to work with and end up doing alright, I guess. Lance Reddick, aka Daniels from The Wire, is a biological weapons engineer named Albert Wesker, and he's fantastic. He brings his two girls, Jade and Billy, with him to Raccoon City, a Stepford Wives-esque city completely owned and controlled by the Umbrella Corporation. The girls have typical Hollywood high school problems, which is, of course, being bullied. I don't know what it is about Hollywood, but every damn kid must get bullied there because if you have a kid in school, it is a virtual certainty they will be bullied, and I really hate that trope. So anyway, Billy gets bullied but won't stick up for herself, and Jade wants her to fight back but can't be bothered to actually help her sister. So instead, these boring high school scenes are cross-cut with one of the two sisters, presumably Jade, living in a post-apocalyptic wasteland where the T-virus has destroyed humanity. She uses a rabbit to see if the zombies have leadership or intelligence or something, and sprays herself with perfume so the zombies can't detect her since apparently all of their senses except for smell start to fade. Her plan immediately fails, and they chase her, but naturally she escapes. I started to lose faith in the show when a big group of zombies is hot on her tail, but the director is unoriginal and trite, so to build suspense, he just shakes the camera a bit and hopes it adds suspense and doesn't make the audience nauseated. I'll let you guess which effect it had on me. One of the zombies catches her, but doesn't bite her for some reason. The rest of the zombies slow down and wait for her one-on-one -on -one confrontation to be over so she can escape and blast them all with fire. And by this time, I was already shaking my head in disappointment. If you are trying to establish a franchise, you need to show the audience the villains are genuine threats. The zombies need to be scary and menacing, not something that stops at your convenience to let you escape. This is a running theme in the show, as a zombie dog is chasing the girls later and jumps into frame from the right for what was supposed to be a jump scare, but really was just lazy and predictable. The dog stops for some reason, I guess to let the girls escape again, before resuming the chase. The only good scene in the entire episode is when Albert is throwing his weight around as a top Umbrella employee to get the school to let his daughter off for attacking a girl, though even this was kind of annoying to watch, since the attack happened while she was in class, and there would have been like 30 witnesses who could be her alibi, including her teacher, but for some reason neither Billy nor Albert nor the principal think to mention this. And I think this is the perfect encapsulation of the new Resident Evil series, for every step forward, there are three steps back. For every good scene, there is an underlying plot contrivance that undermines it. There isn't much left to enjoy, and I clearly am not the only one who feels this way, as the top two rated episodes in this series are Episode 1, with a staggering 4.9 out of 10, and Episode 2, with a equally staggering 4.7 out of 10. Resident Evil 2022 is bland, boring, and makes the critical mistake of not trying to be a horror franchise. The film franchise grossed over $1.2 billion, and every single movie in that franchise is R-rated. The TV show plays more like they are trying to appeal to middle schoolers, and maybe that's the case, but if it is, I have no idea why they chose that audience. They would be too young to remember the original films, and far too young to enjoy the original games. I don't know, I am just really disappointed in the series as I was hoping for a fun little zombie survival story, but it looks like the producers misunderstood the franchise again, and I don't even think I'm going to watch the second episode. I wouldn't recommend checking out the first episode, even if you have a chronic case of horror obsession.